Hey, thank you, Alex, for the introductions. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Gnarly Data Ways, and hello if this is your first time joining. Today, we'll be going over getting started with Hadoop migration and modernization. Before we get started, um, I'll be going over what you will be learning today. So in this episode, you'll be learning about some of the challenges with Hadoop and why organizations are migrating off of it. And then we'll talk about some of the options for migrating off of Hadoop. And third, Kamran will be going over the phase approach to Hadoop migration and modernization. And finally, you'll be seeing a demo of exactly how this works. All right, now let's talk about some of the challenges with Hadoop. If you and your team have inherited legacy Hadoop systems and you're trying to migrate off of the platform, then this episode is for you, right? You may be maintaining and troubleshooting clusters that require resources with deep expertise in the Hadoop ecosystem. And if you look on the screen here, you see there are many components to Hadoop. And we often see organizations that have teams that are dedicated just to maintenance. And there's a reason why, because having a subject matter expertise in each of these components of Hadoop requires somebody that really knows what they're doing. Um, second challenge is that you're probably dealing with the high cost of scalability as your data grows. And one of the reasons why you're dealing with the high cost is that you're not able to separate storage from compute. Right, you need to add storage capacity to store the increasing amount of data, uh, which is usually never deleted. Uh, but at the same time, you don't need additional computing. But by design, the Hadoop architecture requires you to add both, which leads to high cost. The third and fourth points here go hand in hand. Right, you have high latency overhead from your query engines like Hive, which requires a lot of query performance tuning. And then fourth, you're not able to uh, enable governed self-service analytics. Although end users could technically access Impala or Hive from any BI tool, it's more that the performance and efficiency wasn't there. What ends up happening is that IT will end up locking down the environments and only provide curated data sets um, after your end users go through uh, ticketing process uh, to get additional data sets and changes to their data. And so the data engineers are the ones who end up having self-service access because they have the skills to write their own and usually more efficient queries to do exploratory analysis and build their own data sets. Um, and so your end users end up creating their own data sets, which creates a data sprawls and this becomes a data governance nightmare. To give you a short overview of who we are at Dremio, we are the easy and open data lake house. Um, and fun fact, our co-founder Tomer was one of the founding members of MapR and so he's seen a lot of the challenges that came with the Hadoop ecosystem. And that's what kind of led him to start Dremio to solve some of these challenges. And on the right hand side here, you'll see some customers who we have helped with their data lake house journey. So now let's go over some of your options for migrating off of Hadoop. And one of your options is to migrate Hadoop to a cloud managed Hadoop platform, right? And so moving to a cloud managed Hadoop platform really poses some challenges around performance, data governance, and security. These Hadoop systems that are based in the cloud typically use clusters that are over-provisioned and run continuously to handle uh, some of these workload requirements. However, we've seen customers come to realize that the challenges that they face in their on-prem environments, such as with reliability and scalability issues, are now carried over to the cloud-based Hadoop platform. For instance, it takes a considerable amount of time to provision and auto-scale clusters during peak hours. And what ends up happening is that they opt to maintain long running and over-provisioned clusters to accommodate these workload demands. And in addition, they spend a lot of time dealing with troubleshooting, infrastructure and resource management, and end up maintaining a lot of pipelines to integrate these managed services. Your second option is to use a Lakehouse query engine. There are only a few players in this space and most of them require you to have data in cloud object storage. So if you have data that needs to stay on-prem, due to security and compliance reasons, or if your organization is not ready for the cloud, then cloud-based Lakehouse query engines probably won't be a great solution for you. And then finally, we have the cloud data warehouse. One complexity from migrating Hadoop to a cloud data warehouse is that it requires a deep understanding of both architectures. Um, you also find that it involves significant ETL work to reformat and restructure the data for the data warehouse, uh, particularly for organizations with large and complex data sets. Another problem with Cloud Data Warehouse is vendor lock-in, right? To take advantage of Cloud Data Warehouses, your data would need to be in proprietary data format, meaning it locks you in into that specific engine. And real world, enterprise data platform teams have more than one data warehouse across multi-cloud. Uh, we've seen organizations with Redshift, Snowflake, 
big query. And what they end up doing is they have to move that data from the warehouse into a cloud object storage because by design, these data warehouse vendors don't talk to each other. And so and these three solutions are great uh, for analytics and offer one way to migrate off of Hadoop, but they all share a universal shortcoming. It's that it's hard for organizations to enable self-service analytics. And like I talked about before, uh, most organizations have data that is sitting in the cloud and on-prem across databases, data warehouses, and data lakes. The data silos make it difficult to provide end users with access to data, and there's never a single source of truth. It is possible to decommission your on-prem Hadoop workloads entirely using the various options that we talked about today, such as cloud-managed Hadoop platforms, lakehouse query engines, and data warehouses. However, due to the high cost and complexity of data copying across managed platforms, most data teams can't realize the total business value of migrating off of Hadoop. A core concept here at Dremio is that your data architecture should be easy and open and allow you to get self-service analytics across all of your data. All right, now I'll hand things over to Kamran, who will be walking you through the phase approach to migrating off of Hadoop with Dremio. Take it away, my friend. Thanks, Tony. So let's get into the details of the Hadoop migration approach. To see immediate results, it would be best to first switch the query engine to Dremio. Not only would you see sub-second response times, you would also reduce the complexity and provide self-service to your business users. Next, you can move the data from HDFS to a modern uh, data storage, like object storage in the cloud or on-prem, depending on your company's cloud adoption. With these two components off of the Hadoop ecosystem, you'd be in a great position to implement a data lakehouse. A data lakehouse gives you the performance and functionality of a data warehouse at the cost of a data lake. Let's take a look at each one of these stages in a little more detail. You can simply connect Dremio to your existing Hadoop clusters. Hadoop can be deployed on Yarn if you have the capacity on your Hadoop environment, or it can run Dremio on its own uh, instances on Kubernetes, on-premise or in the cloud. And we have offered many other uh, uh, deployment methods. Uh, and this is a very low risk approach, having minimal impact to your production environment. You would Im immediately see sub-second latency performance compared to the other engines. Uh, we have many customers who've implemented Dremio for exactly this use case and saw drastic performance improvements over their existing Hadoop technology. Now, one of the biggest complaints we hear from business users is not being able to access all the data with one tool. By implementing Dremio's query engine, your business users would be able to unify all of your data for self-service analytics. Dremio allows you not only to connect your, uh, to your Hadoop environment and object storage, we also enable, to enable you to federate queries from uh, relational and NoSQL sources, uh, like uh, Snowflake, or SQL Server, Oracle, MongoDB, Postgres, and, and many others. Now, during the demo, I'll show you how Dremio's semantic layer allows you to easily build virtual data models in staging, business, and application layers. Uh, we've designed our UI to be very interactive for SQL users. Now, once your queries are running in seconds and you have empowered your business users with self-service analytics, now you can start to migrate the data off of HDFS to object storage in the cloud or on-prem uh, to S3 compatible technologies like MinIO, ECS, and others. The data movement would be uh, would be done with an ETL tool. Uh, and, and this process is a very low risk uh, function because you'll be moving data in stages and have both data sets available to Dremio for testing uh, before turning off uh, the data that's stored in Hadoop. By turning off your Hadoop environment, you would not only reduce hardware and license cost, but you'd also reduce the complexity in your architecture. Now, in order to fully implement a data lake house, you would need to migrate to an open table format like Apache Iceberg. Uh, this enables DML, schema evolution, time travel, and other data warehouse functionality. And now by implementing an open table format, you will not get locked into a proprietary table format, which is required by most of the vendors like Teradata or Oracle, Netis, and so on and so forth. This also means that data is available to not only Dremio, but to engines, for example, Spark for doing ETL type workloads. Now, remember this slide that Tony showed earlier? Hopefully now you have an idea of how you can decommission all of these Hadoop components and start to use Dremio. 
So let's bring it all together and see what a modern data lake house architecture would look like with Dremio. You have your applications and devices generating and storing data in many different formats and locations on your left side. Then looking at the right side of this architecture, Dremio supports many different use cases for data science and BI data consumers. Dremio provides access to any tool through ODBC, JDBC, REST API, and Aeroflight, uh, which is designed for high-speed data transfer, uh, especially useful for data science use cases. Now, looking at Dremio in the middle, Dremio's query engine enables access to all the data and provides very fast performance for interactive and ad hoc analysis. Dremio offers a browser-based UI, which I'll show you during the demo, which allows uh, data curation without knowing any SQL. Uh, or it's uh, for very uh, for power users, it's got uh, very powerful SQL functionality as well. Now with our semantic layer, not only do you get a unified business-friendly view of all the data, you can also assign role-based access and fine-grained access control to those users. And lastly, we're delivering very some very uh, innovative functionality for lake house management. Just like how you can branch and merge code for applications, for example, like with Git, now you can do the same with data. The service is a catalog for Iceberg, which also provides data optimization functionality. More on this topic in future gnarly data way episodes. And lastly, Dremio's easy and open lake house platform is the easiest way to implement a data mesh or analytics workload as well. More specifically, Dremio provides four fundamental capabilities uh, that are required to support a data mesh. Uh, the first one being a semantic layer, an intuitive user experience that gives domain, domain self-service experience, a lightning fast query engine that supports all SQL workloads, and lastly, a Metastore service. Let's quickly summarize what differentiates Dremio from other technologies. First is the unified semantic layer that empowers business users to do self service analytics with our modern SQL friendly UI. Second is our open platform based on Apache technologies like Arrow, which by the way is our in-memory columnar format, uh, file formats like Parquet and uh, Apache Iceberg table formats. And third is our sub-second performance at one-tenth of the cost. Now Dremio was built from the ground up to deliver interactive query performance, which makes that possible. We, what makes that possible is our columnar cloud cache, that enables us to deliver NVMe great performance directly on data lake storage. Uh, then we have data reflections that intelligently pre-computes various aggregations on data. And of course, the use of Apache Arrow. And uh, Dremio has done a lot of work in uh, workload management. Uh, we offer a multi-engine architecture to isolate workloads. And lastly, our auto-scaling capability, which helps reduce infrastructure cost. And finally, uh, before we get to the demo, let's take a look at two customers who have moved uh, to Dremio from Hadoop. TransUnion was one of our early customers who saw value in Dremio right away when they started testing it against Apache Grill. Uh, customers were uh, experiencing slow performance uh, on uh, with SQL on Hadoop uh, with Apache Drill uh, on, a lot, on, a, on a lot of data, as you can see. Uh, they saw immediate performance gains using our reflections and the self-service uh, ability to explore data. Uh, so Dremio empowered analytics and analysts and um, uh, customers with interactive dashboards. Now, NCR saw 30 times performance improvement uh, when they moved to Dremio from Hadoop. Uh, we have uh, many more customers who have uh, seen similar performance improvements with Dremio uh, and business users uh, love the self-service capability as well when, it, when you compare it to uh, you know, a complex Hadoop ecosystem.